Uh, thank you very much for the kind invitation. Congrats again for the excellent meeting and the topics. So my topic today is how to cross in farpopletal CTOs in CLI patients, all you need to know. Um, and we go uh, through a number of slides and cases that we have collected together with Lorenzo Patrone from uh, UK, where we want to show you all the different uh, techniques and aspects uh, of this um, let's say, uh, of these um, procedures. So here are my conflicts of interest, and uh, when we are talking about chronic total occlusion, we have to think on what is behind this. And if we look in a macroscopic picture, you will see this is what we are treating. Uh, and that means uh, if you want to treat it adequately, that means you need to be aggressive with the vessel, otherwise uh, every other, any other treatment will not uh, last for a long time. And if you see on a histological way, you will see that we have a lot of calcification. Uh, this is the balloon inside that needs to open this vessel. Uh, and this is the reason why you see that we are starting to be more uh, and more aggressive with the infrapopletal arteries. Another important issue that we have learned uh, during the last years is how do we analyze the CTO. And we analyze the CTO based on two important things. First, of the, on the structure of the CTO, and we mean the proximal and the distal cath. And uh, on the second thing is about the, the so-called hibernating lumen. That means between the proximal and the distal cap of the CTO, there is always a channel to go with your uh, wire uh, through. So um, what we have learned and we have seen nicely in the live case that we have done in the SFA, we are now checking uh, the proximal and the distal cap based on the structure, if they are concave or convex, and by this way we can decide if we have this kind of proximal and distal cap, we can go tra uh, directly for, through a transfemoral approach in order to be uh, to stay intraluminal. If we have this kind, then you may need to go just from a transpedal approach. Uh, and if you have a mixed, uh, then you may need uh, to have a rendezvous technique from above and below. Uh, on the other hand, I said uh, we are talking about hibernating lumen uh, of the CTO, and you can see how it looks like. There is always a small channel. There are, ways, there are always uh, thrombus inside the CTOs. Uh, you cannot see anything, but it doesn't mean that there is nothing uh, there. Uh, that's the reason why the most important thing is to penetrate the proximal or the distal cap. Through this way, uh, Dr. Mustafa and Dr. Zad, uh, Fadi Zab, they have developed the so-called CTOP classification. They have four types of, uh, of CTOs. In the type one, uh, you can go directly for a through a transfemoral approach. In the type two, you have the problem that when you're reaching the distal cap, you may go subintimally. So in that case, you may need a rendezvous technique. In the type three, this is the most challenging one where you can go directly subintimally. So you need techniques like CART, reverse CART, and uh, re-entry catheters. We, I will show you some of these cases. And in the type four, you go subintimally, but in the majority of the cases, you can do everything through the so-called TAMI procedure. That means uh, transpedal. So um, what we recommend in those cases, if you have type one, go for a traditional CFA access. If you have type two, go for a dual access. Uh, type three, the same. Type four is uh, just for a pedal access. You don't need either, you don't, uh, either, either need to uh, puncture the, C, the common femoral artery. This is a classical transpedal approach in the posterior tibial artery. Use the hockey uh, um, device for your ultrasound because it is more, uh, let's say, comfortable to, to work with. Um, and then try to puncture in this area above and below the ankle because if you're going uh, uh, above this, especially for the fibular artery, you may uh, uh, not able to control the bleeding, and we have seen some cases of compartment syndrome after opening all these uh, vessels. This is uh, we are using uh, we are using ultrasound for the puncture. Here is uh, how you're puncturing. You're trying to go at 12 o'clock, and then you can see very nicely how the wire is getting inside. Another technique that we are using is that uh, we are uh, going with the needle very closely uh, to the uh, uh, dorsal pedal artery, we are injecting a uh, contrast agent, and on that time, we are carefully puncturing the uh, dorsal pedal artery. You see the contrast agent coming out, and then you know that you are inside, and you can do whatever um, you want. This is the appropriate equipment. You need a needle, you need an, an O18 wire, V18, Command 18, and you need, if it's, if it's possible, uh, a support catheter. This is a CXI O18 uh, support catheter. Don't try to use uh, 
uh, all 14 wires, uh, they will not have this possibility that you want uh, for this kind of interventions. This is a classical case uh, where you see uh, a closed uh, posterior, anterior, uh, and fibular artery. The idea is to recanalize the fibular artery, uh, and here is uh, the puncture, uh, the, the wire is getting above, uh, and then you have a rendezvous uh, with uh, the other wire. You see the CXI catheter is always supporting this. Due to the fluid dynamics, because there is a CR stress always in the distal tip, in the majority of the cases, the distal tip is more smooth. You can go, let's say, uh, you can go simpler through the, the distal tip compared to the proximal uh, tip. Um, and here um, you can see the rendezvous technique, balloon angioplasty, uh, and after the balloon angioplasty, uh, you can have a very nice uh, result where you can see a nice fibular artery. It is patent, uh, and uh, here uh, where there was no blood, there is a lot of blood, uh, and everything is coming from the fibular artery. That's led to, uh, of course, let's say there is the second stage, and the second stage is to treat this kind of, uh, of cases. This is the case with uh, uh, occlusion. After treating this, uh, we have done a very good wound debridement. We are trying to uh, remove the whole infection from there, and then there is no reason to keep this uh, tooth. We have uh, done a metatarsal amputation, we have, uh, uh, let's say, cleaned the, uh, the heel, and we did a nice uh, skin transplantation. Uh, and after, you see how it looks like in one month. Uh, look uh, how it looked like at that time. Everyone wanted to uh, really amputate this limb. And at the moment, at two years, we have a really excellent uh, result. The, the, the limb is saved. So um, now, um, of course, we have to think about difficulties and challenges that the, the world is not so simple always. Uh, and in that cases, we have techniques like the car technique. You're doing, you're opening with a balloon, um, the subintimal space from below, and you're trying to uh, penetrate it with a wire from above. The reverse car technique is quite the opposite. Uh, and then if you are not uh, able to do it uh, cart or reverse cart, you can do the parallel balloons. That means you are uh, inflating both balloons uh, at the level of uh, the rendezvous, and at that time, you, more or less, you are cutting the membrane, and you are trying to uh, insert the wire from above or from below. And uh, the fourth uh, technique is to use uh, a re-entry catheter. That means you are using a balloon from below, and then you are coming from above with a re-entry catheter. You are really penetrating the uh, balloon, and by this way, you can uh, connect the two lumen. Let's see some of those cases. Uh, here is a case where you can see a dorsal pedal artery that it is occluded. We try to go from uh, above. Uh, there is a loop. Uh, we stayed subintimally. There was no way to uh, get intraluminal. Again, here you see subintimal course. We puncture retrogradely, and uh, in that case, um, we try to get uh, inside. Again, uh, we had to do the parallel balloons technique, and by this way, you can see that we were able to uh, advance the wire, uh, and then after balloon angioplasty, we had a very uh, nice result. Always good perfusion means uh, a good treatment. Uh, even in this case, we, can, we could keep the, uh, the first two, uh, despite this uh, osteomyelitis that he uh, had. Here is the use of the Outback re-entry system. Uh, as I said, you are uh, going from above, very challenging case, this one, uh, and we went from below. We were not able to penetrate the, uh, the distal cap of the, of the occlusion. And here is how it looks like. Here is the re-entry catheter. The re-entry catheter has uh, here the, uh, the, uh, the L. The L means where the needle is coming outside. This is the balloon catheter, and in that case, you see we are uh, really getting inside the balloon. That means the wire is inside the balloon. Then we deflating. Uh, the balloon is catching uh, the wire, and then we are just uh, deflating and removing back, uh, and by this way, we have the connection. Afterwards, we have uh, opened it, and uh, we have done a very nice uh, and aggressive um, angioplasty with very nice result, and uh, this is the final uh, result with complete healing of the uh, foot. 
Pierce technique, I really love the Japanese guys uh, that they thought about it. What is this? Is, is, is this the case where you cannot really advance your uh, balloon catheter? Uh, you have advanced the wire, but you cannot advance the balloon catheter due to the severe calcification. This is the case here. You see severe calcification of the distal part of the anterior tibial artery. Uh, we went with the wire up to that level, uh, but here we couldn't uh, further. Here you can see the wire is getting into the dorsal pedal artery. We are really happy with the result here, but we cannot advance uh, the balloon. In that case, is you're taking a needle, you are just puncturing the skin, and you are trying to really destroy the vessel. That means you are uh, trying to destroy more or less the calcification. This causes a fragmentation of the calcium and makes uh, the uh, more easily to get inside. You see, we can further uh, advance a little bit. Now, again, at very distal, you can see here uh, that we are trying again to destroy the vessel a little bit. Uh, we can further uh, advance, and at the end, we had a very nice um, result. Here is the final result. The dorsal pedal artery is now patent, and um, you can see that this makes the difference again uh, where we can uh, save again a limb from amputation. Very important thing is also to understand uh, the perfusion. In my opinion, this is the future in CLI treatment. It's not only the canalization. And here you can see a case where everybody says this, this leg should be amputated. However, it was the only leg that the patient had, and uh, we had to do anything to save this limb. Uh, and what we have done, we have done an angiography. Actually, someone could say, everything is fine here. Why, why should you amputate it, and why doesn't heal this? But you can see that there is a peroneal artery that uh, it is still occluded here and goes up to the uh, posterior tibial artery. So this vessel is really important to uh, recanalize, and we are doing in Athens and the so-called spectroscopy in order to see the temperature at the level of the forefoot. And uh, when we have uh, reopened this vessel, uh, so this was uh, the reopening of this vessel, you can see the big difference in the uh, perfusion at the level of the, of the forefoot. And this is led to a nice healing of this foot. We did a nice metatarsal amputation. We performed a skin transplantation, and this is a result already at six months. So, bus technique, the last, let's say, uh, barrier, uh, when we have a no option CLI, we don't have nothing. There is the lymph flow device, in my opinion, is too expensive uh, for what we can do there. So we are starting using the vast technique. The vast technique, you are getting a snare into the artery from above, a snare into the vein from below. You are putting them parallel. You are trying to go with the needle through the two snares, and then you are checking that you are inside. You have just punctured the skin at that level, uh, and then, then you are uh, inserting an O14 floppy soft wire and what you're doing you're just uh, pulling back the snare from the artery you're just pulling back the snare from the vein and by this way you have your arteriovenous uh, anastomosis then what you're doing is just uh, perf using a cardiological balloon to perform the first angioplasty at that level. You're using a covered stent, and then is the whole uh, thing with the uh, covered stents up to the ankle. And you have an excellent result. Uh, this is the case here where we had no option to treat this case. We have done a metatarsal amputation, but at the end, uh, we could uh, save this limb. So I would like to perform my synopsis. Uh, the TAMI procedure, that means the transpedal uh, uh, access, and the CTOP classification changed completely the success rate of recanalization of BTK CTOs. Technical success rates is, according to the evidence, around 97% if you're using transpedal access. The recanalization of BTK CTOs requires a learning curve and appropriate equipment, and the AV reversal seems to be an effective strategy in no option CLI patients. However, in my opinion, CLI treatment belongs to dedicated CLI centers uh, and teams. Thank you again for your invitation. Okay, thank you, thank you. Theo, Dr. Volchev, can we have your presentation now? Dear colleagues, uh, to be honest, I really hope that in the second live case, we will need to use the re-entry device so I could prove my point, but Professor Business was flawless, so he ruined it for me. But however, <coughs> 
We know in the, at least in the last 10 years, uh, we do endo first for all kinds of chronic total occlusions in the ortho femoral, or in the aortic or uh, femoral popliteal segments, and the success rate has increased dramatically due to the use of the new devices and techniques. Of course, we can argue about this, but maybe the best way to recognize a vessel is to go intraluminal, but this is really possible, uh, and sometimes we have to do a sip intimal recognition. The industry, the industry has flooded us with a lot of different crossing devices, and whenever we're planning to cross a CTO, we should plan whether to go anti-grade or retrograde, and this is highly dependent on the plaque morphology, as Professor Business has already shown. So, of course, we have crossing devices, we have re-entry devices, and uh, what's new is the percutaneous bypass technique. Although the re-entry devices have been around for about 20 years, there is still little uh, information about their efficacy. So I'll show you a couple of uh, randomized trials uh, which showed that uh, when the endpoint is technical efficacy, we see 100%. Uh, uh, so it was useful in all the cases that was used compared to 42% when manual re-entry was attempted. And what is more important that in the first group, the mean procedural time was 36 minutes compared to 55 in the second group. And this is also true uh, for the mean fluoroscopy time, which is 29 against uh, 39 minutes. This is a systematic review, and here the endpoints are uh, complication and technical success and device accuracy, which is defined the distance between the point of true vessel reconstitution and the eventual re-entry. The success rate of the outback catheter was about 93%. Only seven cases uh, failed due to heavy calcification, but this is true for all re-entry devices. Uh, no major and only 17 minor complications. What about the ortoiliac uh, segment? This time, the end point of this uh, research was long-term outcomes after intervention, and you can see there's practically no difference whether when we use a re-entry device or we do manual re-entry, virtually uh, no difference. The last one is a systematic review of 30 studies and more than 1,000 lesions which shows that re-entry device was used in uh, roughly 20% of the cases, and the procedure success rate was close to 90% as cited earlier. The complication rate is uh, really low. It's uh, rated here from 0 to 10%, although in our experience it's closer to 0. The, the only real complication might be a vessel puncture, but uh, usually it uh, heals by itself. And the uh, primary patency rates are absolutely comparable. There are many re-entry devices on the market today, but maybe one of the most widely used are the Pioneer catheter, the Outback, and the newly developed Go-Back catheter. The, pack, the Pioneer catheter is uh, really sophisticated and very accurate because it has an IVOS platform. It has a side port where the need to know needle is entering the true vessel, but by using the IVAS, we can very easily point the needle towards the true lumen and make the re-entry valley accurately. It was the first FDA-approved device. Uh, it has IVAS integrated system. It's very accurate, that's true. And as with most re-entry devices, it's relatively stiff, so it's difficult to, uh, to track up and over the bifurcation, especially in cases where we have very calcified aorta and very uh, difficult angles. And the other main disadvantage is that you need a capital investment in buying this IVAS platform. The Outback editor is uh, much more familiar with. Uh, it has uh, fenestration about 12 millimeters from the tip, uh, which practically means that every time we want to re-enter, we have to do some uh, small dissection in order to puncture uh, the uh, reconstitution artery. It's again difficult to track up and over the tight bifurcation. Uh, severe calcium is again uh, disadvantage and it makes the penetration much more difficult. 
Uh, what we were lucky enough to get our hands on in the last year is this uh, go back catheter, which uh, in my view has several advantages. Uh, it can be used uh, as a guiding catheter and support catheter, and in cases where we see that the guiding wire is going outside of the lumen, uh, when we show the needle a little bit and point it toward the right direction, we can continue with the intraluminal recanalization. So um, it's, it's a very stiff uh, catheter, so you can, it follows the guiding wire everywhere. Uh, the other advantage in my view is that the needle is going straight from the top of the catheter, so in theory uh, you can puncture the distal cap very precisely without causing further dissection, because most of the time our concern is not to prolong uh, unnecessarily the distal dissection zone, because we save it for eventual bypass in case the endovascular procedure fails. So this is very important for us. Furthermore, it's a very low profile. So it uses both O14 and O18 guide wire system. It has several applications. For example, I believe Dr. Nikolov has mentioned that one of the applications is to puncture this relatively easy looking cap, but sometimes it takes a lot of effort to puncture the use of uh, several um, CTO guide wires and so on. But by using the device and only showing the needle for half a centimeter, you can puncture the cap, and with the hydrophilic wire, you can easily continue with the procedure. You see here we have a flush occlusion of the SFA, and uh, although a lot of effort is put to go back into the true lumen, uh, it seems rather difficult. So uh, by using the entry device, uh, a lot of time can be saved because otherwise we have to go retrograde or perform any of the uh, techniques that we saw in the previous presentation. That can save a lot of time and radiation exposure. And you can see here the distal cap is, uh, it, it gives us the information that anti-grade uh, re-entry would be extremely difficult, so we should go retrograde. But in case we decide to use a re-entry device, we again can save a lot of effort and a lot of time. Here again, when we see the distal SFA or the proximal popliteal artery, very diseased, a lot of calcium, a lot of plaques. So again, going back into the true lumen seems rather impossible or at least very difficult by using re-entry device. Uh, it makes the procedure much, much easier. So we all know that re-entry into the true lumen is the most challenging part of performing uh, CTO recanalization. Um, re-entry device gives us, allows us for limitation of dissection, which, as I mentioned, is very important to re-enter as soon as possible. And although it adds to the cost of the procedure, uh, it saves a lot of time, operational time, and which is more important, radiational exposure.